Hey guys, I just wanted to give you an idea of what I was uh, up to this weekend. So there's been a shortage of PPE, that's personal protection equipment, for the medical staff in some of the hardest hit areas. Uh, I have a lot of friends that are still in the medical community in New York, so uh, that hits pretty close to home. Uh, luckily, a lot of makers are rallying to meet the need of N95 masks and face shields. Now, my 3D printer takes about four to five hours to complete a mask on high quality. I could print faster, but even on a lower quality, it's not going to be any faster than one to three hours. And uh, the high quality actually is pretty important for masks specifically, and I'll go into why later. So I've been working with the Billings mask from Billings Clinic, and the first problem I saw is that the piece that holds the filter in place can be very easily knocked out of place. Uh, this actually happens more in real life than you would think. You know, you're in an ER or the back of a moving ambulance, and there's a lot of people and things going on. Things bump into each other. So you don't want your filter failing uh, at that moment because a piece popped off. So I've modified the design with a flange to hold the filter into place. Um, now, the reason why the design uh, didn't have that in the first place is that that would require the 3D print to have supports. And that's uh, an area that they didn't want to do. Um, that would increase the print time and also a lot of the post-production. Supports always add some post-production. So I set out to solve all three problems at the same time. I wanted to increase the production times. I wanted to solve for the flange, that's the filter popping out part. And I wanted to reduce the post-production times. Post-production is actually very important with a face mask because people need to wear it against their face. So really, it should be sanded down really smooth. Uh, otherwise, it will end up causing a lot of irritation and you don't want that, especially if people are wearing it for hours. The way I approach this problem is to tweak the tech stack. This is something that we do in architecture all the time which is to make sure that the approach will meet the requirements. So I updated the design, and then I sanded it all the way down, and I created a mold using a platinum cured silicon. Then I tested a few different resins in the mold. The result is a perfect replica of the original, including all of the sanding work and the flange and everything. This method can produce one mask every 15 to 30 minutes. So instead of uh, four to five hours which I was getting I can get one every 15 to 30 minutes it actually only takes 15 minutes for the liquid plastic to cure but it takes some time to demold it and then reset for the next casting but even at an hour per mask this would increase the production time by a factor of four or five now I'm out of casting material for this weekend um, but I did get the technique down uh, in agile terms this is called a spike uh, next week I'll create a second mold and that should double the production time um, and increase the speed even more. Ideally, I'd have four or five molds and I can produce about 10 to 20 masks per hour with superior design and less post-production. So since I'm out of casting material, I figured I'd uh, work on improving the design some more. One of the biggest problems with all the 3D printed N95 masks is that, well, most of them don't work. That's right, they don't work. This is because in order to achieve N95, you have to have a tight seal against the skin and most masks simply don't do that, uh, including the Billings mask. A tight seal forces the air to be drawn through the filter, and if there's no tight seal, then inhalation will just go through the gaps and you lose any filtration. So I decided to see if I could create a gasket um, made of silicon to, number one, create a tight seal that we need for the filtration, and then number two, make it more comfortable and skin safe for the wearer. Uh, the concept would be to use the Billings design as a template for the gasket and then create a two-part 3D printed mold to inject the silicon into. I have the general design completed, uh, but it's a very complex print. In actuality, this is actually the perfect application of 3D printing because you couldn't easily do this kind of design without additive manufacturing. Okay, that's it for now. I'll uh, continue to work on this in the evenings and then I will let you know how it goes.